Hello, um, it's quite a while since uh, I made the last screencast for um, Coding Freaks, so uh, I'm kind of back again um, after um, a break, which I had to take. Sorry for the delay. Um, I had a lot of feedback um, on the issue of Azure AD B2C. Uh, I, had two, I had two screencasts on YouTube already and uh, I got a lot of um, wishes and um, re requests for updates. And so today um, I want to do the third part, which will be uh, kind of an update part um, because a lot of things had uh, changed since the last screencast I made. So I want to start um, a fresh series on this, um, beginning with what has changed since the last time we looked into it um, uh, in forms of my screencast. So let me start um, by showing you my um, um, subscription here, which is from DevDeer, which is my company, as you might know. And you can see here that this Coding Freaks tenant which I showed you in my previous examples, uh, lives here in a resource group. And there are um, kind of several things uh, came additionally because Coding Freaks now, as you might know, uh, let, me, let me go to it, is uh, not longer uh, hosted um, outside of Azure, but it's an Azure site. Um, so allow, of course. So now Coding Freaks finally lives in Azure and um, I switched to English and I started some new um, articles. The old ones are available here. So that's why you see more uh, things here um, for hosting Coding Freaks. But that's not the point of the cast here. The point is that the first change which came since um, I made my videos is a li lies in the creation of a new uh, B2C. So formally, uh, when you hit add in the portal and uh, search for B2C and went on to create a new Azure AD B2C, this was kind of awkward because um, as I showed you, you had to first create your tenant, which is the same as it was before. And then you had to wait and call this new action, which I did again. So uh, go back here and uh, find it again. Uh, and then hit create again and do the second step. This is not no longer necessary because Microsoft changed the behavior. You go, you can go into this step. I won't do it right now, but you can now create your uh, B2C. And then when it's done, you can um, just in the same experience, go uh, back here. Here you will get back here and do the second step, which is uh, linking to a subscription. So that's the first change, uh, which is you, you don't do it very often. OK, but uh, it was unnerving and they did it better now. OK, the next thing is um, the billing has changed. So uh, let me go to the Azure price calculator to show you what I mean. Um, OK, and let us add a B2C into the calculation. And now what you can see is that you are built on monthly active users, which I think is a huge thing because this means that uh, let's say you have 100,000 users in your uh, B2C from wherever they are from. Um, and only 10,000 are active on a regular base uh, in one month, you will only get paid for those users and plus you will not get paid for the amount of users but or amount of login requests, but for only the users. So that means 10,000 users um, won't generate uh, or will generate like, let's say active users, uh, 10 uh, actions per month which already will be like 100,000 actions uh, because they need a token or whatever. And you don't get paid for the actions, but only for one user, which is pretty good because if you have a website running or whatever, which has more than 50,000 monthly active users, you are already in the professional league, I think, and you should get money for it um, in any way. 
So you, uh, if if you say you have sixty thousand, like for ten thousand users, you pay fifty five dollars, which is not so much. And we are always talking um, here without uh, additional stuff like uh, MFA. MFA is um, paid additionally, I think. Um, I, I don't see it here, uh, to be honest. But anyway, um, so only the bare metal B two C is for most cases I know in principle free. So for intranet web applications and so on, um, uh, if you're working for BMW or whatever, you might hit this border. But anyway. Okay, so now switch, let's switch over now to uh, the B2C, the actual B2C, which is here. So um, the first thing, uh, which is obvious, is when you go to the Blade for managing your B2C, you will experience a complete new mm, user interface. So uh, formally, I can't show you right now um, the former experience, but if you are used to the old one you should see the difference you had uh, here a different uh, different naming which means you had um, I don't know what is what it was I have to look in it but you had a, a long list of black icons here to generate new user flows and uh, this is now completely encapsulated in the policy section I show you this later and um, you have um, a, a much clearer layout here and you have some new stuff which I cover later. Okay, so uh, the next thing which is um, better I think uh, in the UI now is when you go to the identity providers and you try to configure them, let me look at this one for instance, it's no longer um, a UI which um, you know, uh, blocks the list or whatever, but it comes from the right side as a, a side uh, UI, and you can conveniently um, edit this one and then uh, go to the next one and configure this. Um, it's better too. Which what still isn't there, and I miss it pretty hard, is a button for uh, Azure Active Directory as an OpenID um, provider. I think it would be cool if it at some day. Uh, will be available here, but it isn't right now. Um, uh, another thing which is uh, new is that customization of the user interface is completely different. And I want to show you this in a quick demo. Um, I have here a pretty simple um, application in .NET Core web app, which uh, basically has um, everything configured. Uh, I will change this later on and uh, it has a startup method using the NuGet package which uh, does the simple stuff uh, which is covered here in Azure AD B2C. I'll come to this point later. And now uh, if I go and hit this page locally, okay, let me do this one and I go to sign in. You can see that things are a little bit different now. So what you see here is um, a new, f a completely reworked um, a layout for your web apps. And I will do a webcast um, on configuration or customization of this stuff um, uh, in very soon. I'm, I'm planning this. Um, as you can see, uh, there are stuffs a little bit changed. Microsoft is now using, if I hit F5, is using uh, jQuery and I think Bootstrap, which I can't see here right now. Uh, so I don't know. I've seen it yesterday, I swear. But anything, anyway, uh, believe me, it's Bootstrap. Um, and um, logically, they have completely new templates. And... Um, there's something new uh, in this in this user flow section too, but I'll cover this later. So first of all, this is cool. When we go back here and go into the user flows, and let's uh, do the sign up and sign in user flow, and go to the page layout, which is the customization section, you can see a new button here on the top. Um, Microsoft introduced two new templates, which is Ocean Blue, the first one, which I'm using right now here. This is Ocean Blue in the back. And then there's Slate Gray, 
which is basically the same, but um, the background is gray. Here inside, it's pretty the same. Um, and this is pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, so, and the old one here, the classic one, which means, you know, the split screen on the left side, the big image, on the right side, uh, the UI. Um, there has been, um, as you can see, I'm, I'm already using here um, a custom page URI. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm just, I want to demonstrate this in a, in a, um, in a separated webcast. As you can see, it looks like a pretty decent one. And if I switch back uh, and go to the slate gray template and you know, he's saving, I don't, I think it's a new iBug. He's, he's saving my no when I select a new template, but anyway. So this is uh, done now and let me check if this is working. Uh, I, I recognize that this is only taking effect when you locally, when you stop the app and rerun it, I think it's because of uh, the B2C session. And then you have to wait normally till it kicks in. Let us see. Yeah, now it's not working. Let, let us uh, take some minutes here and go back here and do a little different stuff. So you can customize it like you uh, were used to. Let me show my HTML, which I have used for the custom page. It's pretty this. You know, you have um, the bootstrap, you can uh, take it, you have to use um, absolute paths, and then it's still this diff with the ID API, which has to be there. So that's it. And then the rest will come. And I will cover this, as I said, later. Um, okay, then this one is new. Page layout version. Um, there's a pretty good page about this uh, where Microsoft um, explains everything. And yeah, you can see, let me switch to the English version because, you know, my German browser. Okay, let me do this. Okay, um, so as you can see here, this uh, page layout version and JavaScript uh, are kind of coupled. So <clears throat> um, there are some um some points you have to uh, keep in mind when you use javascript um, for instance as you can see here as it is pointed out here is an option um, for switching it on um, and then you have to select page layout versions and then there are let me see where it is there's a list of page layout versions i think it was sorry for the back and forth um, here in the list of what's new, um, public preview, brand new temp, brand new templates. I come to this later. General availability of built-in templates. Um, yeah, you have to search by your own, but there is a list of um, telling you what. Let me go here. What version means what? So what is supported? So I'm currently on one two zero. And um, this means there are certain things which are um, um, supported in 1.2.0 and you have to keep this in mind. Okay, cool. Um, this is far more better than it was because we have more control over um, what happens when Microsoft update the, uh, updates the page layouts in the background because they are able to do more or whatever. Um, so we can decide to switch our um, page version uh, on a later point in time, uh, so we don't get, or we don't run into uh, problems. So we can test it um, in the first place with a custom, um, with a custom policy, and I think it's pretty good. So speaking of policies um, or user flows or however we name it, you can see it here already. already. Microsoft uh, introduced a complete new um, version or is introducing, you see here the classic um, user flows and then you have a preview uh, tab and here you can see there are V2 um, user flows. Um, V2 means they um, have um, seen a lot of feedback uh, from customers and stuff like that. And when it comes to how, for instance, is an email address validated and stuff like that in the sign-up uh, process. And I, I just tested it already and uh, went to the V2 sign-up. By the way, let me 
take a look in my source code, maybe that's the reason why we, ah, yeah, here you can see why my change uh, had no effect because I'm already using the V2 sign up and sign in. So this means I have to use this user flow in order to take a look what I'm doing. And here the template is still ocean blue and let me go to slate gray. And when I go to slate gray um, and run this user flow, let us uh, do it here in the in the test thing. You see slate gray, and um, you see when you go to sign up now that there's email address, new password, and so on, and display name in one screen, which is different from from the current experience. Let me show you the current experience, which is the V1. Yeah. Uh, let let us go here and run the user flow and run the user flow and now you can see i have my background logo this is another cool thing because customization kicks in i'll show you this later and now you can see when i go to register it's it's different um from um uh, from the dialogue which you've seen before so they are now um completely uh, different and actual um, actualized um refreshed if you will uh, user flows and they are called v2 so once again go here new user flow and you can try out the preview user flows um, uh, as you can see here um, uh, even completely new technologies are here okay v1.1 i don't know what that is i would suggest to leave it out <laughs> if i see v2 okay anyway um that's cool and then what we've seen right now was company branding which is not new uh, okay company branding was there but kind of worked never worked which is um, sad but you know this company branding uh, from the um, azure active directory blades um, which is available here too so you can do the uh, actual stuff background image banner logo um hint texts uh, welcome to coding freaks whatever save and then you can um, use your company branding inside of a user flow. So go here. I think it was in the V1 um, uh, thing. And in, I don't know, is, is it in the properties? Uh, and let me take a look. No, it isn't. Maybe in the page layouts. Um, somewhere it is. I don't know exactly where I switched it on. Let me test it. Run user flow. And now um, there should be somewhere, welcome to Coding Freaks, but it isn't. I think it's, um, it is because uh, either the refresh is uh, not there, but anyway, I just uh, hit the banner image and the background. As you can see, it has limits. Uh, let me show you some things which are not so good. Let me do the what no i don't want to say not so good but you have to uh, do a lot of stuff in the css if you do this uh, because microsoft did a, actually a clever job for hiding the image when it's uh, obviously not fitting so you have to do your own css so let me go there uh, back there again okay cool and uh Another thing is um, there is uh, there are new features, um, new roles. Um, as I uh, I've read only about it. I don't know if it's um, um, I I don't tested it um, already or I didn't test it. So there are limited access um, admin roles. I think they are kind of this one. So that means you have more control over the roles for users right now uh, and you can you know no um you can go there and don't use global admin for everything or app admin or whatever which are pretty mighty um but only use for certain things that's cool um another cool thing i've uh i've seen is the new I, actually i don't know if it's new but it's kind of hard for me to see if um if this is new or not let me see where this was. I think it was in the authentication methods, which is yeah, the password protection. Now, um, at least it's it's a clearer UI, so it's kind of self self-explaining what uh, what's going on here. 
and there are um, the options are just kind of uh, stuck together better. Another new stuff is this authentication methods, which is pretty. Um, if you want to use no password authentication methods, then you can choose uh, one of those. Uh, to be honest, I never use them. So it's just, if you need it, you should know what, what it's all about. Okay. Um, and then we have, a pretty important new thing in the area of app registrations. Um, if I go to my test app and there is an annoying thing uh, which is now solved um, and this comes here. So if you look at the app registrations, um, I just configured access and ID token and now here already comes a hint which, let me zoom in, um, as you can see, this app has implicit grant settings enabled. If you are using um, any of these URIs in an SPA with MSLLJS 2.0, you should migrate URIs. What this means is Microsoft added a button to have different platforms. Now I'm on web and now you can add a platform and you can do single page application as a targeted platform and even iOS, Android, or whatever, which are um, different um, from the integration perspective and from the behavior when it comes to redirect UIs. Um, this was single page applications. We at DevDeer, which is my company, we are using React as a framework, and we had huge problems in different scenarios when we uh, use the default redirect UIs, which are, you know, misinterpreted by um, um, the callback is misinterpreted by react and you had to do some crazy stuff in the router in order to get around this uh, when you have to re-log in re-authenticate because your token is expired or whatever and now this is over we are currently in the testing phase uh, getting um, everything to know about this and as soon as i'm confident enough i will do a webcast on this um, on my own. Okay, mm, I already talked about JavaScript integration and as you can see here in the hint, um, MSLJS uh, means there are some good uh, tutorials on how you do it from single page applications with JavaScript. Um, uh, and I think I told you in the last tutorials that integration of JavaScript into your um, into your custom page layouts. Let me go there. Once again, I have to go back and forth. I hope I don't lose you. You go to the user flow and select the flow you want to customize. Uh, let's see this one, let's say. And then when you go to the page layouts, you could decide to do your own uh, page layout. and. I used to say that it's not a good idea to uh, put JavaScript in whatever you put here. So uh, this seems to be over as long as you, um, you know, uh, stick to some uh, conventions. For instance, you are uh, not allowed to change the order of the injected HTML elements, which means the ones you uh, uh, get from uh, Microsoft injected into the API div. You don't have, um, basically, don't touch them with JavaScript. Another thing is you are um, not allowed to do um, uh, a form on your template. Let me show this once again. This is uh, an example, as you have seen, for a template. And now Microsoft says uh, it's okay for you to do something like this. Okay. And do whatever. I don't know. And now we could do, um, uh, how is it? In the new form, is this okay? I don't know even, I think. You know what I mean. And then you could say console, my God, log hello, in order to tell your user, say, you know what, uh, I'm there. So this would be okay from the perspective, uh, you should never do something like uh, item from MS um, 
hide or whatever. So Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft humor is ending here. Don't do it. If the ID here is something Microsoft injects, they say no. Another thing which is uh, forbidden is that any errors occur from your um, uh, custom JavaScript. So I don't know if this counts as an error. Um, I don't know. But you have to avoid this. Then they don't want you to add a form tag of your own, no matter what it does, because they will inject their own form somewhere here. Microsoft stuff goes here. Don't touch it. They will inject um, at some point eventually a form. So they don't want you to have another form on the page and blah, blah, blah. It's documented there, but you can use JavaScript. Okay, um, that's good. Um, and what else? Uh, ah, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, the integration here into .NET Core, which has nothing to do with B2C, but with the NuGet package. I don't know if this was uh, possible um, before, but I just discovered that uh, because I asked myself, well, how the hell do they integrate this link? Uh, let me see. this link because I have no account page or whatsoever account view in my application. So as you can see here on the bottom, mm, no, you can't. <laughs> um, here on the bottom, I will point it out. So this points to Azure AD B2C slash account slash, slash sign in. So they did it because uh, they the NuGet package brings in an ASP.NET area, which is pretty cool. So let me show you login pa partial. And you can see it here. Um, the link is going to the Azure AD B2C area. All links are going there. So this area, which is uh, you know integrated by the NuGet package and not present here, um, supports at least the actions or the view account. And there are the actions sign in, sign out, and edit profile, which I think is pretty cool. And they are linking to the user interfaces of Microsoft um, in Azure AD B2C. Um, so this is pretty convenient and uh, an easy way to have the links um, because some people told me that they have this um, default experience, let me start this, um, which is we make authorization on the complete page. So there is no sign in, there's only the avatar and then at some point, the customer says, you know what, I want the dashboard to be available and then the sign in button. And people ask me, uh, well, where do I point the sign in button to? So that's where I do it. Now we've seen it. Okay. Um, there, are, this was not 100% coverage of uh, what's new there. So when we go to the portal here and go to and the overview, I was pretty surprised what, what has changed since then because I missed some of this stuff too. And you can, can see here October, November, November, even to January, um, which makes no sense. I don't know what this is because uh, it's kind of out of order, I think. But anyway, and then uh, at least three bigger updates in this year. There was a little bit of break, but uh, in May, I think build was the thing. The, the XAML stuff came into place, which is pretty important for people who are integrating things like Salesforce or whatever. So I think um, there's pretty good pace on this uh, issue, um, which uh, I mean B2C. And uh, that's why I decided to do a new series or an update of my series. So um, <clears throat> um, just wait for it and I'll come back uh, and show you what uh, happened there. Thanks for your um, listening and uh, see you see you soon.